Uh, first of all, I wanted to say sorry for the long gap between videos. I've been really, really kind of busy and occupied with a lot of different things. Um, thought I'd tell you a little bit about a few of those today and then uh, get to kind of why I'm doing this video and everything as well. Um, but I do apologize. I, I intended to do a lot more video uh, recording for this show, uh, for this channel, uh, and just haven't really had as much of a chance to do that as I thought I was going to. There's a few reasons for that. Um, first of all, I'm working on a book, uh, which will be released through Llewellyn Publishers uh, probably sometime next year. Uh, I've got a contract for that and have been working on that pretty diligently. It's gonna be big. It's a pretty uh, hefty tome so far. I've got around 75,000 words written um, and it's, you know, it's over halfway done. But um, but anyway, it's gonna be big, uh, really kind of focused on um, New World Witchery, not, not the show, but focusing on the idea of folk magic in North America and looking at a, a lot of the different systems of um, folk magic in North America, kind of thinking, uh, you know, what are what can you learn from seeing all of them kind of sort of laid out in front of you in various various ways? Um, so it'll make more sense, hopefully, as we get closer to uh, publishing the book and I can start sort of sharing some of the material from it. Um, but essentially, it's going to be sort of a giant field guide to folk magic in North America. Um, also, obviously, we've had a lot of different stuff going on with the podcast. We've had lots of episodes coming out this year, which is really good. Uh, I really like that we've been able to get as many episodes as we have this year done. Uh, and then we've also launched a second podcast focused on um, magic, folklore, uh, and literary criticism of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So if you're not following us on Myth Taken, if you're interested in Buffy, if you like Buffy, we think it's a great show. We'd love for you to, to come over and check it out. Um, but uh, that's taken a little bit of time as we sort of found our feet with that. We're in a groove with that now. We're a couple episodes ahead in terms of recording. Uh, I've got some cool plans for that, so that one's going right along. So that's freeing up some time. Um, and uh, you know, I've also had things like audiobook work. If you know, if you know me, I um, do audio recordings for the for Audible, um, and so I read a couple of different books there. One of the big things I do is a lot of Soviet era science fiction and translation. I work with a company that does that, and so uh, I do a lot of. Uh, their narration for their books, which is pretty pretty fun. We really enjoy doing that. Um, but a lot of that settling, uh, there you know we're getting to the end of a, a couple of the cycles of projects for that, or we're moving forward with a lot of other projects. And so I've, I'm looking at having more time for these videos. Um, that being said, there's a lot of other stuff that should be coming. I intend to do more of those old episode videos. I know a lot of people have trouble finding our old episodes on things like iTunes or uh, Google Play. And so because of that, I want to make sure that those are available to anybody who wants them. Uh, and so we post them on YouTube. They don't have much in terms of the video content, but at least you can listen to them if you want to. So I'm going to be continuing to do that. Uh, I do have a script for the next uh, Charm School video, which is kind of our look at uh, sort of using Disney films uh, as a way to jump into the fairy tales that inspire them and then look at some of the folk magic that you see either in the fairy tale or in the Disney film or in both in some cases. Uh, so the next one that I've got for that, I've done the script for it, uh, have pulled some of the material I want to use in it, uh, and it will be all about the Wicked Queen from Snow White, so we'll look at some of the folklore and things like that that go into that into that uh, film. I think we'll have a contest coming up in the next month or two. I have a really cool, uh, at least one cool book that I intend to include with that, so that's coming down the line. Tons coming up on the podcast. Uh, we have a, essentially our entire the rest of our year is already planned out, uh, scheduled. We have a really good sense of where we're going. We've got an episode coming up on seaside sorcery, uh, which will focus on you know magic at the beach. Uh, we're going to have uh, somebody on who's uh, sort of something of an expert on uh, Asian American uh, folklore and Asian American folk magic practices and magical practices, both in North America and in parts of Asia as well, and uh, not necessarily sort of pan-Asian, but focusing on a, a couple of specific areas. Uh, so we'll have that. We have uh, an episode we're going to do, finally, an episode that's just about Halloween. We realize we've done a lot of episodes that are kind of Halloween adjacent or that are focused on like ancestors or things like that. Uh, so we'll do an episode that's really just uh, about Halloween and Halloween traditions, which I think will be really fun. Um, that being said, we're also going to have an episode that's on death stewardship, end of life rituals that'll come around. Then we've got somebody on who's a death doula uh, who will be talking to us about that. 
Um, we'll have somebody on talking about flying ointments. That's kind of exciting. Uh, we're still kind of in the planning stages of that interview, um, but I think that'll be really, really cool uh, when, we have, uh, when we have that person on. Um, we're going to have our typical listener feedback episode sometime around September. That's pretty normal for us. Uh, we've got a lot of great feedback that we want to share, so we're going to be doing that. And uh, probably be trying to put out some more video content as well, uh, things like the Everyday Magic series uh, that uh, are just kind of the short informational videos based on some of our uh, existing blog posts, just uh, just things that you might be interested in. So that's all coming down the, the road here, uh, but I wanted to talk to you today. I wanted to come on and do this video today because we had a really cool experience. I'm actually, you can tell from my background, this is not my typical background. I'm actually staying with my in-laws. Uh, we come down every year and we visit uh, uh, family members in uh, Nashville, Tennessee area. And so uh, we came down here to do that and we're visiting. Um, and it just so happened that there was a day that Lane could drive here. And uh, one of our listeners, uh, who is also a, a YouTuber, Athena Beth, um, and I'll link to her channel, she's pretty fabulous. Um, was, they were both able to kind of come into Nashville and we did some witchy shop hopping. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the shops that we visited. Uh, in case you're ever coming to Nashville, Nashville's a pretty happening place at this point, so it's very likely you would wind up here. Um, so if you do wind up here, I want you to be able to uh, kind of know what some of the stores are like. It's not all of the stores in Nashville, but um, it's a good handful of them. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about those. Uh, and then I also, you know, wanted to talk a little bit about the experience of just how awesome it is uh, that we were able to meet up with Athena Beth. Uh, we've met with a few different uh, listeners who've become really good friends to us over the years. Uh, we've, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've hung out with people, uh, you know, I even have occasionally people who've come over and, you know, crushed on my couch. Um, and I really love that. Uh, you know, it, it's not something I'm going to, you know, throw the doors open uh, and, you know, everybody come on in because safety first, right? <laughs> But at the same time, it's, it, it's really cool because the community that we've been able to foster through doing New World Witchery, um, and it's not really a community that we control, uh, but it's a community that has sort of organically come together around the subject matter that we're interested in, uh, around us being able to have these kind of fun chats with people. It's just been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and Athena Beth is... Uh, somebody that we've known for several years. She's been a huge supporter of the show, very encouraging. Um, and at the same time, uh, it's just one of the situations where when things all line up and we can get together with people, we love to do that. Uh, we actually hope to do some things with that in the coming year that, that maybe will be opportunities for more people to come and meet with us. And um, we've done events, uh, meetups before. We did a, a great meetup in Philadelphia a few years ago that was phenomenal. We really had a great time with that. So really, really thankful that Athena Beth could make the time to come out uh, to meet with us. Uh, super thankful that we just have this amazing community of people who are very interested in folk magic. That's great. That's fantastic. But then also very interested in supporting us and supporting each other. Um, if you've ever been, if you're a member of our, our Patreon community, you get access to our Discord server. Um, and that is just one of the best places I've ever seen. I have never, never seen quite that kind of like online community where people are incredibly supportive people are uh, sharing uh, spell requests or, or needs but also supporting other people with their artwork um, if people are doing research on things like uh, herbalism uh, we have a whole section where people can share some of their herbal research and their plant-based research charms and charming archaeology we have people who are very interested in history and archaeology and just it's so neat because all these different people are coming together for different reasons and they're also supportive also mutually mutually boosting and that's that's a wonderful thing to have in a magical community uh so we're very very thankful about that um and you know this is really cool because uh, you know athena beth is somebody that we've had these really wonderful interactions interactions with she's been on the show before uh, you probably have, have heard her in one of our episodes um and then you know she's also always very very uh kind to us on her channel uh and what's really cool is that some of the things that we talk about clearly inspire her to go out and do something or try something that she hasn't done before but then she'll also have these challenges that she's doing or things that she's working on that uh we take inspiration from and i really love that i love that mutually inspiring sort of relationship that people can can develop over time um so 
you know, that being said, if you got people uh, in your life that are like that, that's fantastic. If not, we're glad that you have found us, uh, and we hope that we can help become that for you, or at least uh, be a gateway into that sort of a community. Uh, okay, so on to the witchy shop hopping that we did. We went to four shops. Uh, a lot of them were actually kind of in the East Nashville area, which um, if you know anything about Nashville, Nashville uh, has gone through this really big boom recently, and it's kind of begun to divide into different sections. East Nashville is an area that has always had um, a really interesting kind of mix of communities uh, going on, um, and it's undergone a, a bit of a renaissance. There's some gentrification in there, and that's, that's not always great. Um, obviously, but it's also become a really, really kind of thriving community with a lot of arts uh, and a lot of kind of sort of fringier, more interesting, crunchier stuff going on. Um, and there's other parts of Nashville as well. Um, I'm a big fan of Nashville, as you can probably tell from my shirt. Yeah. Uh, this actually is comes from one of the shops that we visited, um, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So we went to these different shops. Um, one of them was kind of more in the center of town, near kind of the downtown area. And that's where we started, that's where we met up, uh, and that was a shop called Cosmic Connections. Um, which is, uh, it's more of a typical, if you've been to, you know, any kind of large new age shop, this is very similar to that. They have live readings there, they had a cool little, uh, pop-up trunk show for wire-wrapped gems and things like that. They have a gem room, they have your kind of typical herb room, candles, um, it's, you know, a lot of stuff that you'd find maybe like in an Azure Green catalog, um, which, n not knocking that, it's uh, stuff that people need, people want, and it's nice to have it there. They have a ton of inventory, so if you're looking for something, they probably would have it. Uh, and going there, I picked up a couple of little soapstone uh, figurines for my kids, just because, uh, you know, I can't go anywhere without buying my kids something. So I got them little soapstone figurines, which I don't have with me, but just trust their cute little animals. Uh, and then I picked up uh, something uh, that I've, I used to carry these a lot, uh, which were uh, worry stones. And this one I thought was really neat. This is a copper worry stone. Um, and so the idea of a worry stone is it's just something you carry in your pocket and you sort of lightly rub to alleviate worry. Um, and I've, I've, I've always liked them. My mom used to have uh, one that she carried with her. Uh, she got me one at one point. I thought that was really cool. So uh, I picked one up, just, just something I enjoy. But uh, then we moved on, uh, we visited a shop called Draconis Arcanum, um, which is run by Rebecca Peterson, who's been on our show before. Uh, we interviewed her about um, Nashville and kind of the magical scene in Nashville. Draconis Arcanum is really, really interesting because it is not more of a generic magic shop. It's much more focused on things like um, root work and hoodoo uh, in, in, in part, and then also uh, ceremonial magic. They have a lot of stuff on kind of those two areas. They have some more generalized stuff too, of course. Um, they make a lot of their oils in-house. They make a lot of their own blends and herbal mixtures in-house, which is pretty cool. Um, me being me, uh, I could not uh, resist books. They have a ton of books, uh, including some books that you don't find everywhere, which I think is is nice. So they have a ton of, a ton of books. I couldn't resist buying books. Uh, they are they are my my uh, weakness, I think. Um, and so I picked up uh, just a couple of different uh, little books here. Uh, I picked up uh, Backwoods Witchcraft by Jake Richards, which I had been uh, looking forward to reading. Um, I've seen Jake's work uh, over the past few years. He does Little Chicago Conjure, um, uh, which is an online site. That talks a lot about kind of different aspects of uh, Southern Conjure and Southern uh, Southern root work. Um, this this is focused on essentially Southern conjure and sort of Appalachian area witchcraft traditions. There's there's some distinctions to be drawn between you know hoodoo and conjure and things like that. Um, and I think that he does attempt to do that in some ways. Um, but it's a book that I've been looking forward to reading. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. It's something I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, a book that I had really really been hoping to pick up was uh, Italian Folk Magic by Mary Grace Farin. Um, who uh, runs Rue's Kitchen Witchery. Uh, this is a book that I, I, I'm really, really interested in. One, because I love folk magic. Two, because uh, I think there's a lot of bits and pieces of this that I'm going to recognize. I don't actually have um, any Italian-American uh, immediate heritage. Uh, one of my, my, basically my best friend growing up um, was from an Italian-American family. Uh, and so uh, I, through him, encountered a lot of this material. 
uh, I think. And then some of it's going to be very parallel to stuff that I learned sort of coming from an Irish Catholic um, and Central European Catholic family. Um, so I'm curious to kind of see how that overlaps. And then I picked up Stephanie Rosebird's 365 Days of Hoodoo, um, which I also picked up another Stephanie Rosebird book uh, at a different shop, which I'll show you uh, in a minute. Um, but this one is um, essentially kind of a, a, a daily devotional of, of hoodoo and magic, you could say, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, I've read Stephanie Rose Bird's uh, Stick Stones, Roots, and Bones, which I really, really liked. Um, I actually need to get her on the show at some point. So, Miss Rose Bird, if you were watching this, uh, we would love to have you on the show. Um, but uh, she has some really, really cool kind of hoodoo uh, material in this uh, that goes beyond some of this sort of um, better known things because there's so much material in this and, and I know I've been wanting to read it. Uh, that's what we picked up, or that's what I picked up there. Um, and then we went over to a shop called Hale Nashville. Now Hale is not strictly speaking a witchy shop. Um, lots of occult stuff there. It's more of a goth uh, shop um, and even that's a bit of a, a mislabel. It's, it's oddities, curiosities. They have a lot of kind of quirky fun stuff. Um, one of my favorite designers, uh, Olivia Frankenstein, who did this shirt, um, did some other shirts that I really, really love. Uh, she did um, this little sticker, which uh, I adore, and uh, they have that as a t-shirt as well. Um, but so, so Hale uh, is very focused on kind of like, how, how, can, how can we provide kind of a creepy edge or an odd edge to your Nashville experience? And they do. They have a lot of taxidermy, a lot of bones. If you were looking for any kind of animal bones or animal parts to use in spell work, they have that there. Um, as far as I know, they're generally very ethical. They're using secondhand taxidermy uh, or taxidermy uh, from people who are sourcing sourcing this uh, in an ethical way. Uh, they do have stuff like uh, uh, coffins and medical equipment, stuff like that. Um, the the lady folk I was with, uh, not so so big of a fan of Hale. Uh, they didn't uh, enjoy that. Uh, Athena Beth, uh, I think, was you know she thought it was interesting i was glad that she visited i think both of both both athena beth and lane were glad that they visited um but neither one of them were particularly interested in um shopping there or coming back and i totally get that um it is definitely not a store for everybody but if you like that kind of quirkier weirder kind of darker edge to to the occult experience they have you know occult candles and occult books they have a lot of secondhand occult books you can find some really interesting stuff because of that and again they have a lot of skulls and pins and stuff like that and then i picked up uh, one that, uh, shh, don't tell this is uh, going to be a present for my uh, editor at some point because she's a huge Prince fan. Um, so uh, lots of cool little quirky stuff there. Um, but we didn't stay very long there. <laughs> that was not, not as popular stuff. It's the stuff that I always make uh, when I'm in town. I, I like it. Uh, and so then we moved on to the last stop on our list, uh, which is a place called Aroma G's Bo uh, Botanica. Uh, which I think it used to just be called Aroma Gregory's, but uh, now it's essentially become Aroma Juice Botanica. Folks, it is a huge shop. It is actually in the Donaldson area of Nashville, which is just a little away from East Nashville, but it's uh, still fairly close. And it is this enormous shop, tons of stuff. They do m almost everything is in-house uh, or sourced from really specific companies. They have a lot of the Lucky Mojo products there, so if you like Lucky Mojo, uh, it's a place to buy those. But then they make a ton of their own candles. They make a ton of their own oils, a ton of their own herbal blends, a ton of their own teas. They actually have a little tea section where you can taste teas. Um, they have this phenomenal concept, which I'm, I'm almost jealous because like, if I could open a witchy shop, I would totally want to just steal this concept, but it's great. They have a dress your own candle bar. So you buy uh, you know, a sort of generic candle and then they have a lot of ingredients out on this candle bar. And they tell you what each one does. They tell you about how to dress the candle, different oils, different herbs, things like that. And so you buy the candle, and then you have access to the candle bar, and you can carve uh, whatever you want, runes or markings into your candle, um, roll it in a little bit of oil, put some herbs on it, um, then wrap it up and take it with you. So if you have a specific spell that you need to work, a specific way that you need to do it, um, and you don't want to necessarily go out and buy a ton of ingredients, oh my god, such a great idea, right? Um, Oh, you just go to the shop, buy the one candle you need, bring it with you, and you've got your candle spell ready to go. So I think that's genius, uh, Aroma, Aroma G's, if, if you're watching this, smart move. Also, they have a huge uh, back area where they have uh, lots of books. That's obviously kind of my, my thing. I really dig books. Um, lots of, they have some art, some original uh, wood carvings and things like that that are back there. 
plenty of supplies uh, of all kinds uh, that cater to sort of all over the spectrum. They do have a good bit of folk magic there, which I thought was pretty phenomenal. Uh, I don't know a lot of places that sell folk magic other than um, Draconis Arcanum. Um, so it was nice to see the, the folk magical stuff there. Theirs was a little less focused than Draconis Arcanum, but that's it, still plenty of stuff. There's still, you're not going to run out of stuff to see there. Oh, uh, and I did mention I bought some books there. Um, just a couple of different books. Uh, the first one, the Stephanie Rose Bird, um, and this one is Four Seasons of Mojo. Uh, I haven't really seen this one before. Uh, I think it's actually an older book. Um, it's just not one I've encountered, but it, because I enjoy her writing, uh, I wanted to take a look at it. It reminded me, just in kind of perusing it, a little bit of Louisa Teich's Jambalaya, um, which I really, really like and I recommend if you're interested in kind of contemporary African-American um, incorporation of uh, folk magic in addition to some other kind of spiritualities and spiritual principles and things like that. Um, it's a really cool take on that, and, and so this reminds me a lot of it, and I'm hoping... Um, that it'll be really, really fun. I picked up uh, Johannes Bjorn uh, Gerdbach's uh, Trolldom, uh, which is all about kind of troll magic from Scandinavia, which I think is pretty phenomenal. Uh, you know, I, I've heard good things about this one. I wanted to kind of give it a shot. Uh, I think it's kind of kind of unusual, kind of different. Also, um, total random thing, my kids are really into the Hilda series uh, and the Hilda uh, graphic novels, so... Um, there's a lot of trolls in that. I don't know, that area of the world is very, very fascinating to me. I, I do have some heritage there as well. Um, so I just wanted to explore that a little bit. I'm always interested in learning. And then this one is one that um, I've heard a lot of really good things about. I'm not a tarot person, generally speaking, but uh, I've heard amazing things about this. This is, I think, its third or fourth printing. Um, and it's just kind of a tour of the tarot that gets you thinking about different aspects of uh, what you're what you're seeing in the cards, um, tries to make tarot a little more accessible for you. Uh, again, I've heard amazing things about this. Uh, so, 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Pollock. Um, so, I wanted to check that out. Uh, I wanted to kind of give a quick you know rundown of these different shops. Uh, I can't necessarily recommend any of those books um, just off the, off of the top top of the stack because I haven't read them yet. Uh, just added them to my pile. I have a lot in my pile as it is. Um, but hopefully uh, I'll be getting to those in the next couple of months and get a chance to, to you know, yay or nay, give, give kind of my opinion, my take on them. Uh, I've got some reviews coming soon on the website about some different books. I'm actually going to do some uh, graphic representations, graphic novelizations, graphic stories uh, that will be of interest to people uh, like the stuff that we do at New World Witchery. So hopefully uh, that'll be coming. And then I've got some other book reviews kind of in the pipeline too. In addition to all the other crazy stuff I'm doing, um, in terms of writing my own book, uh, in terms of writing uh, scripts for shows, for videos, and things like that too. So I'm staying busy, <laughs> as you can tell. I'm definitely uh, getting uh, plenty of projects, plenty of irons in the fire, right? Uh, so uh, you've got plenty coming your way from me uh, in the not too distant future, and from us in the not too distant future. So tons of stuff coming down the, the pike for that. I uh, wanted to share a little bit of this experience. Again, just so thankful uh, that we were able to do this, to, to get together and have this experience. Um, when I'm down here, oftentimes I'll get a chance to see Lane for a couple of hours uh, while I'm here. But it was nice to have like a whole day where she and I could just hang out in person again. Uh, and then also uh, have Athena Beth there. That was really, really lovely. She she even um, she brought me a little present, a little... Um, uh, black tourmaline uh, bracelet, which I've been wearing since. Uh, just I love it. I love that she was so thoughtful and, and, and did that for us. Um, she also got Lane uh, a present as well, so another uh, bracelet. I, I forget what her stone was. Um, so don't hate me, Athena Beth. You should just leave, leave a comment and tell us what the what the stones were. So thank you, Athena Beth. Thank you, Lane, uh, for, for making that day so wonderful. Uh, I also would love to hear from other people, uh, hear from you all if you're watching this video. I'd love to know, you know, uh, are you a part of the New World Witchery community outside of the YouTube channel? Uh, if so, where are you finding us? Uh, I'd love to know that. Um, I'd love to know, you know, what do you come to the YouTube channel for? Uh, are you interested in these kind of personal one-on-one -on -one videos? Um, is it the, the sort of quick everyday magic videos? Are you just looking for something that you can share around very, very easily? 
Um, is it the Compass and Key Charm School stuff that we do with the sort of the Disney uh, materials? Uh, do you do you want to have this be just sort of the announcement space where you just hear about contests and things like that? Uh, you know, what what would uh, what would make you interested in spending more time here? Um, and then also, you know, we want you to come and find us in other places too. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, we have the Discord server. If you're a Patreon supporter, you can come to Patreon, um, you know, a dollar a month or whatever you can afford. That's super, super helpful to us. It gets you access to that Discord server, which is really cool. Um, you know, we, we would love to have these connections with uh, more people uh, who are interested in being a part of our community, uh, our world, uh, as much as you'd like to be. Um, that's really kind of it for me today. Uh, please do leave comments. We would love to hear back from you, uh, hear what you what you're interested in uh, here, you know, your your side of, uh, if there's a witchy shop in Nashville that you know about that we missed that you'd like to recommend, or if you know anything about any of the, the things that I showed here today, I'd love to hear your take on those. Um, so feel free to leave comments on that. Uh, if you can like, uh, that would be helpful. If you can like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, that is helpful, gets us seen by more people, uh, gets us kind of circulated a little bit better, which is always wonderful. And share stuff around. Uh, if, if you know, if, if you can't um, do Patreon, we totally get that. That's absolutely fine. Um, but if you if you still want to support us, um, taking just a few seconds to share a video that you like um, somewhere on social media, uh, or share a post that you like from the website, uh, share an episode that you like somewhere, all that's really really helpful to us. So uh, if you can do that. That is a huge plus to us, um, and we appreciate it. So, uh, I think that's going to do it for today. Again, uh, thank you, Athena Beth, for coming out. Thank you to all the shops that we visited for being so gracious and hosting us uh, to come visit you. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again soon.